Uh, hi, uh, thanks uh, for the introduction and uh, I think it was a great work done by the uh, by Julian. I mean, it's, it's very difficult to make a presentation just after lunch and uh, he did a great job giving everyone a break. So here's my topic. Uh, I'm supposed to talk about uh, discovering great places to be uh, and engage. So how many of you know Zomato? Alright, uh, how many of you have Zomato app installed on your phone? Awesome. So I was supposed to speak about uh, discovering great places to eat and engage. So I think half of my work is already done. So you can just open up your app after this presentation is over and you can discover great places to eat. I'll just talk about engagement now. So why do we engage users? And this is a real uh, image we've just taken from the uh, this all it said. So uh, just a bit of background of uh, you all, uh, how many of you are engineers here? Yeah? Awesome. How many of you are designers? Alright. How many of you are both? Nice. Uh, any product people around? Oh, they are awesome. And how many want to do your own startups? Uh, <laughs> there are some people who want to in everything in life. <laughs> So if you want to do startups, uh, I think uh, this is one thing you should, you should understand that uh, more users means more money, and that's why we are talking about uh, uh, user engagement here. So you know, every time you go for evaluation, every uh, even you speak to your friends, your colleagues, everyone will ask you how many users. They ask you, I mean, cryptic words like DAUs, MVUs, and stuff. And basically, they just want to know that how many users are actually using your product because the more users you have the more money you will make in the future. So uh, this is kind of a vicious cycle through which uh, usually people acquire more users. So what happens is that uh, you acquire more user, you tend to engage with them. If you are able to engage them successfully, you kind of retain them. And if you are able to retain them, you grow. So uh, let's say uh, cost of getting a user on your site or using your product is 1 rupee um, and you have 10,000 rupees in, in hand. So what you can do is that you can spend that 10,000 rupees every day and get 10,000 users to your site. So your work is done. Let's say if your target is 10,000 users to your site, you can spend 10,000 rupees every day and you can get the same users. But here's the catch. So the catch is that uh, actually this, it's on an average about cost of acquiring a new user is about 7 to 10 times more than the existing one. And people say that about the repeat customers, they spend about 67% more than the new user who is interacting with your site for the first time. I think e-commerce guys would be, would, would be able to correlate with this more. So that's why it probably makes sense to <coughs> engage users so that you can retain them and then probably get more money out of it. So it's more about using your money guys. So I'm going to talk about a uh, few things that we follow as matter. How do we manage user engagement there? Uh, I have a more of a product background, so I'll be covering it more from uh, product and communication aspect of it. There are various ways of doing it. There is a design element also added to it, uh, but I'm probably not going to not going to cover that uh, today. So there's Jewish thing there uh, who helped us in design. <laughs> she can give you tips after the event. So let's start with communication. So why communication is important? Uh, have you like how many of you buy stores like things from offline stores like retail stores and all? Like everyone does. What is the first thing you notice? Do you notice the product that you are selling, or do you notice that you know the, how the person greets you there? So what's the first thing that you notice once you enter the store? It's the first perception is built primarily by the way the, the user greets you there. So if, you know they they show your cold face. They will not treat you properly. You will not, you'll not be comfortable in the sort. I mean, there are people who would say, no, I don't need any help, I'll, I'll probably look out my, myself. But you will be comfortable if somebody greets you and somebody talks to you once you enter the store. So that's, that's how important the communication is. And uh, the kind of, so I will be 
cover it three points uh, in communication aspect. Uh, how we do it? So the first thing that uh, I'll cover is about closing the loop. <coughs> so what happens usually is uh, so you talk to your users. There are various ways of interacting with the user. So you send them e emails, you call them up, you send them push notifications. Uh, you meet them. You know there are different point of time in the uh, in the customer life cycle to interact with the user. But the trick is to close the loop. And uh, here is what I mean by closing the loop. So the loop is closed in three parts. So there is an action, there is gratification, and then there is a reminder. So what happens is that let's say someone comes to your site, someone comes to your store, someone downloads your app. What do you want him to do first? You would want to him. You would want him to do some action. Probably register with your site, buy some product, uh, sign up for your newsletter, or whatever. So you would want to motivate him to do that action. So probably you will communicate him with various ways. So you you do emails, you educate the user about you know, what all your site can do, what all your products can do. So, but what happens usually is that I see I got like I register with different sites. I get a uh, a welcome letter saying that hey, you can do hundred things in this site. Whereas that's my first visit. I would not want to know, you know, that there are hundred things that I can do with this site. So if you take up, if you draw a parallel, I mean, if you go and learn, let's say, playing a guitar or any musical instrument, what would they start with you? They'll probably start with, you know, exercising your fingers. Then they'll teach you some basics, and then they'll take you to pro level. Imagine you go to the, you know, a, a guitar tutor and they'll say, hey, you can do hundred things. These are, you know, these are some that you play. So people usually get back there, you know, and there is a drop off. So what we do is we follow something called uh, a drip campaign, uh, wherein uh, we divide the entire communication into different phases, depending upon what what is the level of engagement of the user. We give him the different communication. So let's say if he has installed the app for the first time, we're gonna tell him what are the basic things he can do with the app. If he is updating the app from the previous version. You are going to tell him what are the new things that are added in the app. Uh, similarly for the email communication, if he is a new register, we tell him a different communication. If let's say he is uh, 15 days old, then we are going to introduce him with some new feature. So, so that the education is spread over time and he is able to comprehend that. Second part is uh, extremely important. So let's say you end up doing, so the user end up doing the action that you wanted him to do. So he bought that product, he got the sign up. Uh, let's say for the matter, he wrote a review or he liked a restaurant, whatever action that you want him to do, you have to make you have to make him feel happy about that. If he not feel happy about doing that action for you, he will not do that again. So here comes. So you have to take care of the gratification. So what how we uh, do it the matter is that let's say if somebody has written the first review, we kind of send an email to all his friends saying, Hey, your friend has written the first review, why don't you come back and encourage him? So people come back, write the review, they like the review, they share the feedback, they are comments. So the user feels happy about it that you know, hey, there is some gratification about writing the review. And then and then he picks up. Similarly, that review is also, you know, we send a notification to the uh, restaurant as well that like, hey, somebody has written a review about uh, uh, about your restaurant, why don't you come and uh, that review and acknowledge him. So restaurants also come back, if it's a grievance, they come back and address it. So user feel comfortable that you know, hey, I've done something and somebody is hearing me. Uh, the last bit is reminder. So he has done something, he felt happy about it, but you have to keep on reminding him that hey, you've done something, it's been a while, but you do it again. And gratification uh, can be a very little thing like uh, so you push a button and get a feedback of that button. The kind of animation that you see from the button can also be an element of button as they react to it. So let's say I'm liking a user, the kind of animation that like button has. That can be a you know, gratification can be as simple as that. Uh, here are few examples of the emails that we sent. Uh, the first one is the email that we sent to uh, users in London. So what we also do is that since you know, uh, since I left office, uh, as far as I remember, my was in 19 countries. <laughs> I uh, I'll not go and launch something by the time I was here. So, so what we do is that uh, we try to uh, draft our communication. This is the target audience. So that's the first one, which we send it to users in London. 
the subject line of the email was uh, screw with you. Uh, imagine sending it to India. <laughs> so uh, the second one uh, is the uh, email uh, for the first review that I talked about. So somebody has written a first review. You send this email to all our users saying that, hey, your friend has written a first review. Why don't you like it, go read it, encourage it. And the third one is the reminder email that I talked about. That somebody has written a review is not coming back to the site. So we send an email just to remind him that, hey, it's been a while. If you not written something, why don't you come back and do it? Anything you want to ask so far? Are you like there? Uh, yeah, so that's the yeah, gratification part. So someone has written a review, the merchant has replied to it, so they feel comfortable about it. But not everyone is lucky that you know you upload a great photo or you, you know get likes on it. So for people like me, uh, we also have a feature called uh, views. So whenever I upload a photo, I just get probably one like. But I feel happy seeing that you know it's been viewed 200 times. Uh, this is the second part. Uh, I think uh, there was a lot of talk, uh, we discussed a lot about uh, uh, social media in the previous talk as well. So, the matter is also very pro on social media, we do a lot of creatives, we do some contests as well. Uh, but what, so I think a lot of companies these days are focusing on social media. Uh, they go behind buying followers, Facebook likes and stuff. But what happens with social media, I mean, not everyone gets it right. So I think happily married, unmarried is one of the few companies who have cracked the social media campaign so many times so well. And most of them have gone viral. But there are very few companies who are able to do that. What most of the companies end up doing is, is uh, so let's say if we draw a parallel, let's say a friend calls you for a dinner. I mean we feel like you feel happy about it, he's serving your drinks and dinners about to her, uh, about to arrive. And he'll say like, hey, uh, this is one thing, you, I have some, this work with you, why? will you buy something from me? So, I mean, how many of you will like it? I mean, do you, how many of you have friends like this? You have friends who will probably call you and then will try to push you to buy something and get some work done? None of them. And would you like such people? I think very few of us probably would tolerate that. So, why would a company want to do that on social media? So social media is very personal, like uh, like he said, it's you know a one-to-one -one communication, and people don't like a direct selling pitches on social media. So if you want to go social, please don't sell them. What the matter does is we kind of try to build a brand, try to establish a connect with the user, so that he identifies with us more of a there is a more of a brand identification rather than selling them. So you will not see any in any creators we are asking them to why don't you download an app, uh, why don't you write a review on Zomato, hey why don't you, like none of these posters I think even have a link back to the Zomato site. So they are they're there on Facebook and they will stay on Facebook. So this was uh, two series that we done that one popular, one was built on, uh, on the prime time uh, uh, series we draw a parallel on food and that was uh, uh, popular series which was done on two kind of people which was covered I think crazily in, in the social media. Uh, there is a third and the last thing that I cover in uh, communication. So, uh, how many of your day games? Okay, so uh, I think everyone else has their parents staying somewhere else. Uh, how often do you visit them? So weekends, uh, probably weekends. So let's say you'll call them every weekend, you'll visit them uh, every week. What's the first reaction you get from your parents? I mean, even if you'll call them every day, you'll text them every day, they'll feel different when you meet them. I mean, let's say if you skip one weekend, they would want you to meet them because there is something which is there in the personal communication which is not there in the emails and SMSs. So, what we, but it's, it's difficult to scale it up, but we try to do our bit. So, what we do there is we do foodie meetups in most of the prominent city we go in. Uh, we call some bloggers, we call some people who are crazy about food, we speak to them, we interact with them. We get feedback about our products, we get some insights about the markets. Uh, we host sometimes we host some events, uh, some contests in association with some restaurants or some malls where they can, we can talk to people. And uh, we send some goodies. Uh, 
to our people, uh, not only the vouchers or the emails, we actually send like police to them. And uh, this is the kind of feedback we get. So we send like goodie bags, masks, and people take selfies and they post it on social media. I mean, and we don't ask them, but yeah, they feel happy about it. So, yeah, three things. Uh, you need to close the loop. Uh, try not to sell on social media. And try to do the real thing. It will be difficult to scale, but the kind of insight, the kind of feedback, the kind of loyal users you get out of that, I think it will be totally worth it. Any questions so far? Is it like all clear or all clear? <laughs> Alright. So, I'll. Uh, so the product part now. <laughs> How many have read uh, this uh, quote? It says that uh, if you are not embarrassed by the first version of the product, you have launched it too late. How many of you agree with that? I think a lot of people do. Uh, but what happens actually is, if you just draw a parallel of the mobile app uh, installs, um, Sorry, it's 60 was I think I have quoted the number incorrect. It's the 16 percent of users who are detained after the first day. Uh, 84 percent of the users uninstall the app uh, on the day zero. So, if you are not so, especially in mobile, what happens is, if you are not able to impress it in the first glance, you are gone. The cost of rewiring the, the same client can be as high as 10 times than the cost of the first acquisition because if he is not impressed for the first time, you have lost him forever. I'll just change this number. This is the 84% of the people uninstalled the app. This is the incorrect number. So, what? And the best thing is, they are not happy. They are uninstalling the apps not because of bad design, bad product, uh, bad communication, because they have not even experienced that product that much. Uh, I think majority of uninstalls.
So, and that's how we handled it uh, in the products. So, on the on the on the left side, you'll see that there's a we introduced something called collections, uh, and we we launched a new product uh, which which are handpicked collections. What we do is that we made that choice even easier because the feedback we got from the users was there were too many collections. Sometimes it's become difficult to choose out of that. So what we've done is that we've created a, a day of the week, time of the day, and within specific collections which pop up on your screen, you just have to open the app and we'll suggest you the places where you can go. You don't have to do a thing. So you open the app. This is the app I so I opened the app today morning and I was suggested to go for a South Indian breakfast. I'm not very fond of it, but yeah, <laughs> there is uh, some level of personalization to be built in these products. The second one, uh, what we do is that, uh, so there's a basic search that everyone else can use. There are other uh, things that we've added, uh, uh, this is the user feedback, but probably I'll skip that. Uh, positive gamification, uh, it's always good to add some element of gamification in, to drive a, a positive uh, interaction, let's say, even now, uh, we are kind of giving goodies for people who are tweeting, uh, which is a good way to incentivize people to tweet. But we are not giving goodies to people who are you know, tweeting with uh, the event today. So that's why we draw the line and say uh, positive gamification is nice. So it kind of gets the user back. It gives you the motivation of doing something. So this is the first, uh, this is the first element of uh, gamification that we have on our side. Um, depending upon the kind of content you contribute, uh, you write reviews, you write upload photos, you kind of move ahead in the foodie level and uh, believe me, uh, foodies are very passionate and they are very particular about the foodie level on this side. Whenever we, if we are able to make any changes in the algorithm, we get like hate mails from them. That my foodie level is worth 5, how come you, I am down to 4 now. Uh, this is something that we have added recently. Uh, what we are doing now is that uh, we are making uh, people experts of their zone. Uh, what happened earlier was that we had an expert at a city level, but um, that was kind of flawed at two levels. So one, uh, people were not, one is that very few people could reach that right level, plus food is a very local thing. So I say Gurgaon pays for it, I would want to know what are the best places to eat Gurgaon pays for it. I don't care about you know, what are the places to eat in, in probably South Delhi. I would not even go far. So what we've done is that we've created experts at a zone level so people can write reviews uh, and upload photos of the restaurants in the zone and they can become an expert and they get promoted in, uh, to, through, through the site. So I think people are liking this as well. This is probably one of the toughest things uh, that we do as a matter. Uh, so as I said in my last count, we were at uh, uh, 19 countries. Uh, we are available in uh, 8 languages. Uh, and it becomes like, extremely difficult for a product person to customize their product uh, based on all these countries. So what we do is that the basic layer of the product is same. We kind of do custom changes based on the market that we reach in. So the very base is that you know the content has to be customized. So I can't I can't roll out a Zomato and Toronto and show them in very restaurants. So obviously the content will be from from that particular city. But what we also do is that uh, we kind of try to uh, understand their eating habit and try to customize the product a bit uh, so that you know they feel that it's a it's, it's being customized for them because uh, as I said earlier food is you know very very local so the way people eat in South Delhi is different from the, the way people eat in East Delhi so probably you can't go that macro micro but at the city level at least we try to make some effort so that people don't feel that you know this is a product built from India and being pushed to us so this is a screen that you will see if you will open up the app uh, in Latin it will tell you the Great places to which you'll see uh, to me it was telling me South Indian breakfast uh, and London it's, it's showing a nice uh, egg and probably eat it. Um, we also have in the evening we suggest people to go for afternoon tea because that popular in London that's not there in Delhi. Uh, there's a second screen which is filters for Dubai. You can see that there is an option to filter restaurants by availability of shisha which is popular in Dubai. The last one uh, is our app for uh, Lisbon which has been translated into Portuguese. So, a lot of effort goes in, but uh, that what differentiates a, a good product. And if you want to, you know, appear like a local product, you have to do in all these efforts. Um, that's the last bit, which I think uh, differentiates between a good and a great product. So, what happens is, and 
these are the kind of products, if you are able to build such great products, these are the kind of products that, alright, we have a, another <laughs> guess. <laughs> yeah. So, and these are the kind of products that you create a very loyal user base who would come to your product again and again and they will, you know, say, swear by your product and even if the competitor will give you 100 rupees discount, they will never, you know, they will never cross that line. So, and this will require a lot of effort. So, uh, so there is a 999 kind of principle that uh, uh, people follow is that effort required to build first 90% of the product is same as that the effort required to build the next 9% and it's the same required to build the next 0.9% and probably it's never complete. So just to give you an example from yesterday, it took me about 3 hours to make this presentation and it took me about another 3 hours to just polish it and I was not able to and I was you know, coming to the conference, I was not able to polish it at that extent, so the last 9% was there. <coughs> so, just to recap, keep the basics right, do the fundu stuff, but don't uh, ignore the basic stuff, test it on different browsers, check for crashes, because most of the people get pissed off because of the hygiene factors. They expect you to do miracles, but they expect you to make sure that you know, basics are kept correct. Uh, always listen to your users, have some element of positive gamification, don't overdo it because what it tends to do is that it will kind of incentivize uh, uh, a certain kind of behavior which may uh, make your product non neutral. But things are happening all around. <laughs> <laughs> so, think global, it will take an effort but it's totally worth it. Uh, and do take care of uh, details. Uh, this is the last slide, the uh, last one slide of my deck. So, uh, all this entire thing, designing a product, designing communication, uh, making a user experience, primarily depends on uh, the kind of emotion that you want to drive from the product. So, there are products that want people to you know, feel safe. So, they design their product, they design their communication, basis that. There are products that should make people feel you know, comfortable using that. There are products that will make feel people like, you know, it's fast, it's speedy, they're getting things done faster, they'll make products to make the kind of feeling that they feel that you know the product is reliable. What the way we prioritize this matter is we kind of optimize our products for, for law so that whenever you download a product, you download an app, you use a site, that's what you feel. Thank you. It's 
less about UI because UI is more or less uh, consistent across all, all the geographies. We don't change too much of colors or uh, what we optimize on is on the communication side of it and the filters. So like you said, the, uh, the example I've given you before uh, that Dubai has a Ashisha filter because the Ashisha places are popular there so they would want us to have that filter so that they can shortage those restaurants.